Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Roblox Game Development. In this episode, we're going to um, begin learning a little bit about minigames and actually making our very own. Um, to do this, we're not going to really create a map. We're actually going to use just this base plate um, and put some spawn points around it. Um, the easiest way to make spawn points is most likely to um, create a map and then create small little bricks that are invisible and you shut the can collide off of and then set them down. The reason for this is it's a lot easier to remember the name of spawn points and just put them in a model together and then randomly select one of them rather than have a lot of vector threes that you have to change yourself. Dragging and dropping bricks to different areas is typically much easier and much faster. So let's go to our script. Oop, I still got the habit of it being in workspace. It's in script server script service now. And um I believe yeah, it should be this one, right? Alright. Thank you guys for this tip of just holding control and scrolling up. It's a lot easier that way. Hopefully you guys can see well. Um, that would be nice as well. Alright, so we've got m.txt equals minigame has been chosen. Get ready. Alright. Right now, it really doesn't do too much besides just start a game and then loop through itself, right? Okay. Well, we're actually going to create another event, however, um, later on, that will run this as a loop, and then we'll be better off. For right now, however, we are just going to create spawn points around this map. In the next episode, we should be at or should actually be creating the mini game, uh, or at least spawning players onto the map. For this episode, though, again, all we're doing is adding the spawn points. So let's go over to our basic objects menu and find part. There we are. All right, now here is the new Roblox stud thing. I'm not sure if I'm really a fan of it because the R's are just going to get in the way, but it doesn't look too terrible. However, it doesn't matter. All we're doing is we're creating our brick, um, we're making it nine can collide, and we're making it anchored. We're going to rename this brick spawn point. And we're actually going to create a new model in workspace as well. Um, model. And let's name this uh, spawn points. And we're just going to move spawn point into spawn points. And then move it to wherever we want. Um, I'm not going to get too close to this zombie right now because this zombie is still going to kill anybody it sees. And I don't really want that right now. Oh, I didn't mean to create a whole new spawn point, it's just a whole new spawn point. Okay, create one here. You guys might be wondering why I'm keeping these visible. Um, the reason for this is because it's a lot easier again to see where people will be spawning when you can actually see the bricks than having to search the map to find them. We will make these invisible via a script. Now you want to keep equal space or you want to keep pretty distant spacing. If you have a map with a lot of buildings or obstructions, it's great to put them in places where uh, they'll be safe from anybody like shooting at them or anything. Um, so put them in a building, in a small room, um, somewhere however that they have a couple ways of getting out and a couple plans of action that they can take. Alright, we've got three, four, five, six, seven. We're just going to place an eighth one down right here. Now this isn't this isn't the best spacing. Um, this is actually pretty bad spacing. The reason I'm doing it this way though is just to show you guys you usually don't want anybody in the middle. You usually want everybody spawning on the outskirts. The reason you want people spawning on the outskirts. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. This guy's way too outskirt. Um, move him here. Alright. 
The reason you want people on the outskirts, however, is because when people are on the outskirts, they all move into the same area, and then you have a mass battle, and those are usually pretty fun for players to play in. By having these set like this, um, we're forcing players to meet up around here. Now, of course, they could run around the map and hit each other that way, but the idea is to force people inside to here. Um, we're going to take all these spawn points now and move them into our spawn points model, not our terrain, our spot. no, not there either. I guess now you can put bricks inside of bricks as parents, whatever. Um, into our model, there we go. And now, in this model, we're going to create a small script. Uh, children equals script.parent get children for i v in i or in pairs eh. we'll do i pairs i guess now nah, we'll go pairs i can never make up my mind on stuff get used to it um in pairs do and ch if we got to make sure it's not the script before we do this if children Actually, we don't need that. We just need v dot um, name equals script, then return end. Ah, not return end. Okay. Since there's no continue um, in Lua, some of you more advanced play people might know what continue means. Um, some of you might not, but just to make it kind of easy for you guys that don't. Um, a continue statement in a loop typically means, okay, stop this iteration, but go to the next one. Um, but there is no such thing in Lua. All right, we're going to continue. If it's not the script, then um, v.transparency equals 1. Um, what is our problem here? Oh, we need this little squiggly line, not exclamation mark. Again, in most programming or scripting languages, it's exclamation mark equal sign to mean the same thing as this. However, in Lua, they just had to make life difficult. All right, so now we're just going to press F7 to start a server. Um, we're not going to start any players. Yes, um, we're not going to start any players because we don't really care if anybody's here right now. I just want to make sure that the spawn points are invisible, but that they're still there. So as you can see, they're still there because, well, it's working, and we can highlight one, and there we go. We've got the outline for it, um, but they're all invisible. So there you go. That's how to make spawn points on a minigame. Next episode, we're going to actually put players into these spawn points, and then after that, we're going to actually start working on making players fight each other, and once there's only like say one survivor we're going to re-loop through it so thank you guys for watching please don't forget to hit the subscribe button please hit the like or the dislike button correspondingly how you felt about this video and i will catch you guys later mm -hmm.